So far we've talked about a number of TL431 circuits including constant current sources and um, voltage level detectors. Now we're going to be combining both to create a very nice 12.6 volt battery charger. The circuit has been built and tested and um, it came up with some things that amazed even me. So without further waiting around, let's get going. Here is the actual prototype circuit as it was on my workbench. This is the battery, this is the test battery. This of course monitors the voltage across the battery. I adjusted this potentiometer to have a trip voltage of 13 volts. That is it would charge up to 13 volts and mostly turn off and it would automatically kick into I believe a trickle charge mode and maintain that set voltage. In this case it ran for over four hours without a hitch. Here's a look at a uh, closer look at the meter and the battery. This is a lead acid cell in this case. 22, 12 volts at 22 ampere hours. We've gone over this. This is a constant current source I presented in an earlier video but it has been modified and changed quite a bit. Same circuit. Here it is in a blow up of the um, charger video. You notice there's a difference. There is this connector block here that wasn't present. There's also a blocking diode that I added to it. When you're charging batteries up with this you need to include a blocking diode so voltage from the current from the battery doesn't feed back into the charging circuit when the power is off. If you'll notice there's two wires, a green and a yellow that work their way over to here. If you look behind this that is an optocoupler. Why did I use an optocoupler? Well let's find out. Alright we have seen this schematic before but briefly the charging current is set by R. That's 2.5 volts divided by R. The charging current was 250 milliamps for that lead acid cell. You can find out about how the rest of this works on the website or view a previous video. But here the important point is this. I was looking at the circuit and I was wondering what would happen if I open the connection here at X. The 4.7K provides the bias voltage and operating uh, bias current and operating current for the TL431. Break the connection and, we'll, and no surprise the whole circuit just shuts down. Hmm. So I took the same circuit again. You notice here that I put in a blocking diode and a battery in this illustration. Every time I press the switch to close it, I'm delivering 250 milliamps to the battery. Now I don't want to sit here and hold a voltmeter on the battery and hold the switch. We already discussed a possible solution to this problem. Let's add an optocoupler instead of a push button switch. A high on this input here turns on the LED, turns on the transistor, completes the current path through a 2.7K to Q1, Q2, and turns on the constant current source. No input, LED off, transistor off, the circuit shuts down. I did make this as an alternate symbol for this whole circuit because it's hard to put the whole circuit on a 1280 by 720 frame when it starts getting really complicated. Alright, let's move on. I'm sure we recognize this circuit back from our video and voltage detectors. This was my under voltage detector using the TL431 
Briefly, it works like this. You'll, you have VN, which, which will connect to the battery itself, not to the constant current source, but to the positive battery terminal. And you have VSET. VSET determines the trip off voltage for U2. Until that voltage is met, U2 is turned off. V out goes to VCC, breaks down the Zener diode, turns on Q1, turns on U1, LED lights, and with U1 turned on, the constant current source is turned on. All right, here is the complete schematic. Might be a little hard to see, but here is our voltage detector circuit. You have the input, the 4.7K connects to the positive terminal of the battery. Here is our blocking diode. I used a 1N4007 in this case. I have a 10 ohm value for R, gives me 250 milliamps. And as long as the voltage across TP1 on the battery positive terminal is below the value set by the 100K resistor, test point 2 will be equal to VN. In this case, v, VN were both connected together and it was a 19.5 volt power supply. Actually, it's a laptop power supply where I changed the plug out. Okay, in this case, with U1 turned off test point, 2 goes to VN, breaks down Zener diode, current through this little NPN transistor, LED on, um, LED and the optocoupler on, the photo transistor on, current turned on, and the diode goes back to VN. I just used VN as also the source for the, uh, L for the optocoupler LED current. Redrawing this so you can see it a little better, all of this up here, minus the diode, has been redrawn into this symbol, which shows one, it's, it's a photo, it's an optocoupler input. There's your light. His, this represents the uh, TL431 circuit, and this sort of represents the fact that you can change the value. And all right, when this uh, battery, as it charges up, reaches 13 volts, which, is, which was set here by R1, the TL431 will turn on. Test point 1 at this point here drops to 2 volts. Well, that won't break down the Zener diode, turns off Q1, no LED lights up, no current through the optocoupler LED, and the and the op, and the current output goes to zero. Now, what's interesting is the particular test battery that I use here was a defective battery. Yeah, you can charge like most defective batteries, and how you can tell with them is they'll charge up to a point, and you think, ah, it's charged up. It took a charge. Well, no, it tends to try to go back down. As it goes back down. The circuit here immediately detected that, turned off, and re-energized all of the circuits turning the constant current source back on. And as near as I could tell, it was running at about, it was doing this five times a second, just pumping enough current into it to keep the voltage up at the set test point, or the set point, I should say. So. So it sort of reverted to a trickle charge to maintain that voltage. All right, this completes this video. Please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. The schematics and photos and so forth are on the website in the link in the description. And I have a lot more coming so stay around and catch you on the next one.